Y'all, let me tell you something. I'm kicking myself. I'm kicking myself right now because y'all heard about the day I had yesterday, right? Uh, If you were with me on yesterday's Let's Talk About the Show, uh, Let's Chat About the Show broadcast. And so I had made this beautiful plan. I'm like Donald Trump. I had a beautiful plan. It was a beautiful plan. Everybody loved it. (laughs) I had this plan. Okay, I'm going to sleep in late because I'm taking off because I told my boss I'm going to take off, you know, because I had to go fill in for somebody yesterday. I'm taking off. And so... Uh, I'm going to, I had said to myself, okay, I'm going to get, do what I need to do in the morning. And then I'm going to get back. I'm going to get in the bed and sleep until the show comes on. I'll watch the show. I'll do my broadcast and I'm going to get back in in the bed. I'm not even going to take off my robe. Okay. Well, that just hasn't happened. And I will tell you it's now in the early afternoon and I have been doing my hobby ever since I got up. So, um, there you have it. Okay. So let's talk about the show. First of all, I will say, I really enjoyed the show today. Okay. Um, oh, what was her name? Gosh, let me look at my notes. I really enjoyed this girl, and I'm actually going to get her book. Well, I'm going to listen to it on Audible because, what was her name? Oh, my goodness. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Megan Trainer. Okay. Somehow I thought her last name was Trader. Don't ask me why. I think I was thinking of like Trader Joe's or something. Anyway, I will tell you, I don't know much about her at all, except what I learned. To, actually, I know nothing about her except what I learned today and what I got in my inbox about something she said on her um, podcast, which I already told y'all about. But I will tell y'all, I thoroughly enjoyed her segment. She was funny. Um, she was cool. You know, she had that young uh, person energy. I love that um, she's pregnant. You know, I actually um, am glad they didn't bring up the F teacher's comment because she is pregnant. And I know, I know maybe this is going to be unfair, but I'm also a merciful person too. And not that that doesn't mean you're not fair, but I guess I felt like, you know, well, you know, we don't want to stress her out. You know, we don't want to, you know, make her stressed out and here she is carrying a child. So let's just not bring it up. Or maybe they didn't know about it, but I highly doubt because that they didn't know about it because the producers are supposed to research a person in the story really, really well before, um, they have them on. So maybe they didn't feel like it was a big deal. I thought they would talk about it uh, because Joy is a former teacher and because Sonny's mom is a teacher or was a teacher or what have you. Um, and that it was just really something odd to say. You know what I mean? Um, but anywho, um, but I will tell y'all, I thought that segment was fun. I, I laughed a lot. So I was actually glad, you know, that's the good thing. Um, and one of you guys said this to me last season because I had said somebody was going to be on the show who I didn't know who they were. So I was like, child, I'm just not even going to, I'm going to flip it off because Columbo comes on. Well, it used to be Columbo. Now it's Murder, She Wrote. Um, But Columbo used to come on at the same time that The View comes on. And so anytime somebody was on there and I thought that, oh, I don't know who this person is. Who cares? Right. I would just flip the TV on Columbo. But one of you said the one of the things that you do is you, you, you still watch those people's interviews because you may it may be fun. You know, you may learn something you didn't you know know. And I was like, oh, I should do that, too. Right. And so anywho, so that's what I've been doing. And I will tell you, I'm glad I, I watched uh, her interview today and I didn't flip it off because it was really good. Um, now, um, they talked about Don, which I was glad they did, because listen, y'all. Despite his friendship with whoever at our show, um, he is a trending topic and he's going to be a a trending topic for the next few days. Um, And of course, they talked about Tucker Carlson, of course. And and now more details are coming out about Don's situation. More details are coming out about Tucker's situation as well. You know, one of the things that I thought was interesting, I love what Whoopi said because I actually said this on my other YouTube channel. A few weeks ago, for those of you who don't know, Variety Magazine did a bombshell story on Don Lemon. This was like about a month ago now. And um, they allegedly talked to a total of 12 people that made up his former and current uh, colleagues. And these people told specific stories about experiences with, with Don. I mean, like very detailed like it's very, it's highly unlikely that they would have made it up because it was just too detailed. Each person had a, basically, um, you know, basically they were saying he was terrible to them. Well, listen, I did a story on that story. And what I talked about is one of the rumors was that because he had had a long history of being misogynistic, when they were ready to get rid of him, they on purpose put him with two women, knowing he hadn't changed his ways and that he would um, ax himself. You know what I'm saying? And so when Whoopi brought that up today saying, you know, you heard what she said a a moment ago, she was like, if he was misogynistic, why would y'all put him with two women? 
And we saw Sonny go, mm-hmm. And so it very well could have been a purposeful move, business move. I mean, sometimes these business people, they give us all a uh, rope to hang ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying it's right, but uh, I think most of us, especially if we're in the, we're listening and we're 45 plus, plus we understand this is, this is a part of it. This is what happens in the workplace sometimes. People know you, uh, your boss will know you have a problem. Maybe they've tried to put you in training. Maybe they've tried to work with you. And when they see that you're not going to change, they may like you, so they don't want to fire you. So they just give you enough rope to hang yourself. And it very well may be, I'm not saying it is, but it may be that that's what happened over there. Um, I, when I was reading that variety story, I was like, this dude has a problem with women. I mean, what is his problem? (laughs) You know, dang, you know? And, um, like one of the issues was like one time, allegedly he got angry. This was years ago. Okay. This was years ago. This wasn't any time recent. It wasn't even with these girls. So years ago, he was a reporter. He wasn't just, he wasn't an anchor at that point. He got upset with something that one of his female colleagues did And so he took pictures and tore them up all over her desk and inside of her desk. I mean, so Don has some childish, you know, behavior, you know, and that doesn't mean he doesn't love his mom that like Sonny was pointing, doesn't mean he doesn't love his sisters and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, when it comes to his colleagues and the way he interacts with women, he very well. Uh, and I believe he is. I believe he is misogynistic. I, I just don't think 12 people now people lie all the time. I'm very much aware of that, but I don't think. Uh, 12 people would have these very detailed incidents that happened over the course of 14 years. See, that variety story went back 14 years. And one of the things that we learned from the New York Post is that Don Lemon, when that story hit the, hit the press, he threatened to sue them. Okay. And so, anywho, so I was just glad that they all talked about it. Um, I was also glad that Sonny admitted that she is biased. And, you know, and sometimes we need to do that. Like I was saying the other day, when Whoopi was taking up for Andrew Cuomo, Instead of just saying, guys, listen, I have a little bit of bias because I am a friend of his. He's a friend of mine. I fundraise for him all the time. So listen, (laughs) I'm just going to stay silent or whatever, you know, um, do that. But but to to not have enough self-awareness to realize that we're biased um, is just not the healthiest thing. Um, I wish Anna had been there because. I would have loved to have heard her commentary. Now, I will later go on Instagram. So she may have something on Instagram that she's posted. Um, So, yeah, let me see what else. Um, Let's see what else did they talk about. Oh, my gosh. So many things. Hold on, guys. Let me look at my little notes. See, that's what I'm saying. When when you're a blogger, you you can't just like watch the show and and giggle and sniggle. You got to be taking notes. Okay. Talked about Tucker. Oh, Oh, I did not know Harry Belafonte had passed away until this morning on the show. But I got something to say. Y'all don't think I'm a terrible person. I'm just telling you the truth here. When I hear what they say, he was 96, 97, something like that, 94, 90, something in his 90s. When I hear about a 90 year old passing away, I don't do what the audience did. I don't go, oh, I'm like. I I celebrate. I'm like, wow, they 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 lived a really long time, guys. I just wonder now. If they tell me somebody died and they're 25, I go, ah, oh, or I'm shocked. Like, I'm not shocked when someone in their 90s dies or someone in their 80s dies or someone who's in their late 70s passes away. I'm not, I'm talking about when it's a stranger. I'm not shocked by that. I just wonder sometimes if we understand we're not supposed to live forever and that we're not going to. And I think people understand that. So I shouldn't say that. It's just that I just know when I hear these types of things like, when Betty White died, she was in her 90s or what she had just made it to 90, something like that. I wasn't like, oh, no, Betty White. I was like, wow, she is entering into um, paradise. Praise God. I mean, she lived so long. She saw so much. She experienced so much. I don't know. So, yeah, um, but I didn't know he passed away. And I was like, wow, um, uh, Sonny's book. She her book is coming out next week. A sag on. Oh, my goodness. I forgot the title of it. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I wish I could come to this because if I could, I would be there on May 3rd. For those of you who don't know, mark your calendars. Those of you who live in, in New York or in Brooklyn or Jersey, or whatever. Um, Sunny's going to be at a bookstore in downtown Manhattan talking about her book. And Joy is the moderator. It's only for an hour. And the tickets were like fifty dollars because I was looking online because I was like, you know what? Oh, that would be a great little trip for me. It's during the week. It's during the week. I forgot if it's like a Wednesday or a Thursday. You can Google it. Just Google Sunny Hostin, Joy Behar um, book store, and it'll all come up for those of you who want to go. Um, 
I think that was pretty much it. Oh, I did not know that Sarah, you, Sarah is on or was on antidepressants at some point. You know, when I hear, you know, maybe because I work with um, abused children for so long or just children and families in general for 18 years, I know for a fact that sometimes people mischaracterize their mental health. So sometimes people are just like nervous type people, right? And they'll say, oh, my mental health. I don't see that the same as a bipolar disorder or psycho, you know, you know, somebody who is, um, you know, not psycho, but someone who has like, um, you know, who is schizophrenic. Um, But people who just don't know how to manage their emotions. I don't see that as a mental health problem. I just see you need to learn how to manage your emotions. I see you, not you, not you personally. I mean, the proverbial you. So when I heard her say all these years, oh, I, I, I have anxiety. I didn't know. I just took it like, okay, she's just get an- get anxious about things, you know. I didn't know that um, it was to the point where she needs medication or she takes medication. Because the reason I say that is because remember Megan Trainer was talking about how the doctor she felt like the doctors and the nurses blamed her when her first child was born because she had been on antidepressants. I think she said for six years prior to getting giving birth. And she had checked with her doctor. She did her due diligence. And they said, oh, girl, you know, this one won't bother you and and the baby, but this one will. So don't take this one, but keep taking this one. And then when her child was born, he was kind of like asleep, you know. And we all know that a lot of people say that that's one of the side effects of those meds is that you just feel like you're in a stupor, right? You're just like uh, in a daze, you know. So it was really sad, you know, that she wasn't given the proper information. Um, I'll just tell you all this. That's why for me... um, For the last, I would say, 10 years, I put very little stock in Western medicine now. The way I used to think about our healthcare system and our system of healthcare, period, has totally changed as I've been educating, well, our family, as we've been educating ourselves about um, what's really going on and natural medicine and how to do this and do that. Now, I want to say this because, you know, we get people that get triggered and they don't know how to handle it. And so they start shooting off bullets at the person talking. If you have some sort of mental health issue, I'm not talking about you. How could I? I don't know you. I'm just saying that we all know that there are some people who make their situation appear worse than it is. And there are some people who are taking medications for things that they don't need to be taking medications for. Whereas there are some people who really, truly need to be medicated. Other people need to manage it, you know, through lifestyle and other things. Right. But I I didn't know that. And she was saying how she got off her antidepressants. And I was like, oh, wow. Now, I had heard her say that she struggled with depression. um, But I don't know. I guess I never really thought of it in that context, like the way she was saying it this morning. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, I didn't know that it was like really, really that serious with her. Um, Listen, I grew up in in a time where people were anxious. But, you know, they didn't see it as a need to go get on medication. They just manage their anxiety. Not everybody's able to. Some people need medication. Right. Um, But I find in this day and time, um, (laughs) people just, you know, sometimes it's easier to take a pill than learning how to manage ourselves and manage our thoughts and manage our emotions. Uh, we just want an easy way out. It's kind of like losing weight. Some people just want to peel. I don't want to go work out. I don't want to exercise. I don't want to change the way I'm eating. Just give me a freaking peel that'll take off all the weight. That's why we see so many of these celebrities on that 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 diabetes medication. That's ruin. That's going to ruin a lot of people's health because they're misusing it. So it was just very interesting. I learned something about Sarah this morning, and I, I was like, wow, okay, okay, wow, very interesting. Um, so I'm glad that Sarah is taking the precautions she needs or that she feels she needs for her own mental health and stability. That's a good thing. But anyway, guys, as I let you go, I really enjoyed today's show. Um, I really, really did. Now, as we're learning more and more about Tucker's situation and Don's situation, oh, did you guys hear that um, they're saying that Janine Pirro's up next, they're going to cut her next, and allegedly Laura Ingram too. Now, we know that, you know, what happened with Janine Pirro on the show years ago. We also know Laura Ingram has been there before, and, you know, that hadn't gone too well. Also, we know that Janine and Laura very often attack the view on their own program. So if they do get cut, especially in this smart data or whatever the next lawsuit is, um, we will 
I, it'll be interesting to see how the women handle that. You know what I mean? Um, especially when you have someone like a Megan Kelly, Kelly saying, all of y'all's careers are going nowhere. You know, it's like uh, their careers are doing just fine. You know, when you when you can stay on a job for six years or for 26 years like Joy or 25 years like Joy, um, 14, 15, 16 years like Whoopi, six years like Sunny, I think your career is going just fine. But when you're like a Megan Kelly or some of these people, you're not on a network long before they they ask you or what have you or you get canceled or whatever it is. And then you have to go to another network or a streaming service or lo and behold, you only have a podcast like, are you a YouTuber? You know, like all of us, like, okay, we're YouTubers and we're not celebrities. Come on. Surely you can do, you can do more. You know what I'm saying? Because of who you are and your access and your platforms and your connections, right? You don't have to just kind of go for YouTube. So it was, it's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays itself out, especially as now we have Biden putting his name in the ring for president again, and all these people, uh, what are we going to see in terms of a shift in media? Uh, will that mean we're going to see a shift in our show and the way they discuss things? I don't really know, guys. We'll just have to see. So, guys, those are my thoughts about today's show. Drop down in the comments if you feel comfortable. If you are watching the show, which I know you were, let us all know what your thoughts were about the show. Don Lemon, Tucker Carlson, the guest, Megan Trainer, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, guys.